What's up guys, thanks for tuning in again. Wanted to talk to you today about a recovery plan to get you through this divorce. I'm sure a lot of you are kind of just waffling along and looking for some direction, maybe some answers into how do I right this ship? I'm gonna cover kind of a brief overview of some things that I think you should focus on that will help you heal and get over this as fast as possible. For more details and other thoughts and ways to help, check out my other videos. If you find any value in this video, or in any of my other ones, please like and subscribe. It helps out the algorithms and gets my videos to more people. First thing that comes to mind is just self-acceptance. One of the things that most of us go through is this feeling of like guilt and shame, like we should be handling this better, right? We shouldn't be this upset. We should be, you know, top of our game. You know, what's wrong with us? You need to let that go. First and foremost, let it go. Lower your expectations. Get rid of your expectations because more than likely, you've never been through anything like this before. So number one, go easy on yourself. Chill out, relax. Quit telling yourself you need to be something other than what you are, where you're at, and what you're doing. It's just, it is what it is, accept it. That acceptance will help you navigate and get through this easier. If you fight that, you're in for a long haul. You know, you're, you're in for more strain and hardship and struggle. You're gonna have this internal war going on and right now you need to be on your side. You need to be your own best friend. You need to support yourself. You'll have probably a lot of thoughts about what other people think, what families think, what friends think, what you need to just put that aside and focus on you right now. None of that really matters. You can't control that anyway. One way to think of this is think of when your computer isn't acting right and you have to re restart it and boot it up in safe mode. Right now, you are booting up in safe mode. You're not gonna be at full capacity and that's okay. Don't expect yourself to be at full capacity. You are in safe mode as you get back on your feet and feeling better. Just understand that's where you're at and be okay with it. So once you get better at accepting yourself where you're at, supporting yourself, being your own advocate and friend, you wanna start making just small strides to feeling better, right? That, that sounds obvious, right? Of course, I wanna feel better. But it's conscious efforts. And the way we do that is being aware of how we feel. You know, there's two ends of the spectrum here. There's depression and then there's happy. And you can't fight this with just positive thinking. The reality is it's a spectrum. You know, it's not happy or depressed. It's somewhere in that range. Well, understand, again, self-acceptance. Understand that this is a process. And in that process, your depression may feel a little bit better just to be sad. And your sadness may feel a little bit better just to be angry. And your angry may feel like revenge is a better feeling. Now, this is a process of you getting to feel better. Now, revenge feels better than sad sadness. You feel some sense of control. And when I say revenge, I'm not talking about literally doing something to this person, but more of an emotion. And, and for me, that emotional revenge feeling was, I'm gonna prove to myself, to her, to others, to doubters, I'm gonna get through this and I'm gonna be better off without her. You know, whatever that is, it's a progression of emotion. That revenge may turn to not caring as much and then it may turn to slightly hopeful, from hopeless to hopeful. And then next thing you know, it's, ah, I'm, I'm having better days. So just understand it's a, it's a spectrum of emotions that you don't necessarily have to jump from sadness to happiness. It's just accept yourself where you're at and understand, okay, I'm just gonna keep moving in the direction of feeling just a little bit better. And like I said, anger may be better than sadness or hopeful is better than anger. Really what I'm talking about is becoming more mindful, more mindful of what you're thinking, what you're feeling. A tool I'm currently using that I wish I would have used more when I was actually going through a divorce that will probably help you is meditation. Now, I have heard people talk about meditation I have tried meditation. I'd understand if you tuned out right now, but here's what I wanna share with you is just my own personal experience that I think will help you. And that is I'm finding that if I get off on the right foot at the start of my day, it improves my day. I find 
that if I can get my arms around my thoughts and my emotions and set them on the right course for the day, my days are a lot better. And part of how I'm doing that is through meditation. Now, what is meditation? You can look up all kinds of different types of meditation. I'm just gonna tell you what, what works for me. I'm hoping it might help you guys as well. So the best description I have found for meditation right now is just sitting in a quiet space and the thought of turning off your thoughts completely is damn near impossible. In fact, that's probably what's discouraged me so much from even trying meditation or sticking with meditation because I, I mean, it's difficult to stop my thoughts. So here's what's worked for me. You find a consistent noise that could be an air conditioner. For me, I sit on my back patio. Just faintly, I can hear the traffic in the distance and that kind of humming sound. Sometimes I can't hear that. Sometimes it's the noise of bugs in the, in the woods behind me. And what I do is I allow myself to let go of everything. So this is where it's gonna be good for you is you're gonna give yourself a break from all of this garbage you're going through, all of the struggles, all the problems, all the problem solving you think you need to do, all the hurt that you're feeling. This is like you call in time out. And for me, I set my timer for 10 minutes and I say, you know what? This is a 10 minute break from life for you. And so I sit on my back porch, I find that consistent noise that I can focus my mind on because your mind wants to grab onto something. And if it doesn't have something to grab onto, it's going to be like, oh, this thought, oh, the lawyer, oh, the wife, oh, the kids, oh, the work, oh, blah. you know, next thing you know, you're all over the place. For me, I find that one constant noise I can go back to, right? And of course, um, wife, kids, work, all these different things are popping up. But then I, I remember once I'm conscious of these thoughts, I go, oh yeah, there's that air conditioner humming noise. I'm gonna focus back on that. I know I'm giving you some specifics on this only because I'm finding it's a pretty simple way that I've seen benefits. And here's what the benefits are. One, you take a step back and you take a time out from your problems. And two, I find that it kind of just levels me out. You know, my I've been aware that our minds tend to just go to the negative things. And whether it's, you know, the media, uh, the group of influence, the crummy hand you've been dealt lately, whatever it is, there's plenty of negative out there. So what this does is it stops the thoughts, the conscious thinking. A really good analogy is it's like all those thoughts are like pushing a cork underwater. And all we're doing is we're getting out of the way and letting that cork float back to the surface. And that surface is peace of mind and clarity and a connection to something that is bigger than my puny little brain, right? I'm connecting to something that I like to think of is the source of where I come from, which all these little problems are just little problems made up in my mind. I've seen a few things lately of some really influential men admitting to using meditation. One video I watched late recently was about Kobe Bryant talking about using meditation for just five minutes, where he would just, he, he described it as taking a break from his thoughts and connecting to his inner being. And he said it just gave him more poise, more clarity, more confidence. He got that from Phil Jackson. Phil Jackson also taught Michael Jordan that. These are, these are guys at the top peak mental performance. If it's something I can learn from, share with you, and it helps us in wherever we're at in our life, I think it's probably worth checking out and trying. Next thing I'd recommend is move. Now, I know most of us, we end up on the couch, we're drinking beer, we're eating Cheetos, we're watching TV, we're getting lost in the computer, turning to all kinds of things to just numb us, right? I've got something that's more productive and will numb you from your pain. And that is move. Get up and move. You know, I, uh, if you watch another one of my videos, I talk about literally jumping up from your couch right after this video is done and running out the door. Just run around the neighborhood. Run like you're being chased by a mountain lion. The point is, you're, you're not gonna run very far, especially if you've been sedentary and, and not really moving much. You are going to spike your heart rate you're gonna get your blood pumping. Breathing is gonna become labored. And what you're really gonna do is you're gonna bypass your ability to think about your problems. 
because what's going to happen is you're going to be so present with this discomfort of, oh my God, my lungs are burning, my heart's beating out of my chest. But more than just a distraction from your problems, you're releasing endorphins. And those endorphins are going to help you feel better. So those natural chemicals that make you feel better are going to be flooding your brain. For me, I wasn't much of a runner. I like to go to the gym and lift weights. Well, I'll tell you what, you, you exert yourself lifting heavy weights, channels that aggression, that anger, that frustration, highly recommend it. So my last piece of advice is I recommend to you, say yes to more things. Get out and do more things. You've got a new lease on life, right? You can focus on the past or you can turn and focus on the future. Focus on what you want more than what you don't want and say yes to more things. You know, there was a movie called Yes Man with Jim Carrey. He was going through a divorce. I found inspiration from the movie because he just had a chance to do new things, try new things. Right now, you are going through a lot of change and you might as well create a new network, a new social circle, a new environment that's different than the past because you can't go backwards, you can only go forward. You give yourself the best chance of creating a life that you choose. Say yes to more things, focus more on what you want than what you don't want. Just make little strides towards better feeling thoughts and feelings. And that will get you moving in a positive direction to hopefully helping you heal, recover, and be better off having gone through this. So good luck to you guys. If you found any value in this, please like it and subscribe. I appreciate you and we'll catch you next time.